Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the November 2nd, 2017 meeting of the Rotary Club of Louisville. I'm Tony Kemper, head of the DePaul School, president of our club. Please welcome Claire Arnold, who will lead us in our invocation. Claire is coordinator of events and community initiatives for the University of Louisville. Claire. Please join me in a moment. Introduce one of my oldest and closest friends, Jackson Andrews. Jackson is the managing director of Endeavor Louisville. Endeavor is the world's leading organization for providing entrepreneurs access to talent, markets, and capital, and currently has offices in 30 different countries and four U.S. cities. As Claire mentioned during the invocation, Louisville became the third U.S. city to land an Endeavor office a few years ago, largely thanks to the work of, uh, and salesmanship of Jackson. I've known Jackson almost my whole life. He's an incredibly humble guy. Um, but, John, you think that's funny? Uh, <laughs> so I imagine he's not going to talk about this in his presentation, but he truly was instrumental in getting Endeavor to come here to Louisville. And it's, as we can see over the last few years, this has become a big, big win for our city. Um, Endeavor staff, an extremely impressive group of board members, work with and mentor some of the most innovative and successful companies in our city. Next year, Louisville will play host to an Endeavor International Selection Panel, which will bring business leaders and entrepreneurs from all across the globe right here to Louisville. Um, certainly this type of showcase for our city wouldn't be possible if Endeavor didn't already have uh, an office here. Prior to working with Endeavor, Jackson was in the financial services industry. He holds the Chartered Alternative Investment Analyst designation. He serves on both the Forbes Nonprofit Council and the Milken Institute's Global Young Leaders Circle. He's a graduate of Center College, is currently getting his MBA from Harvard Business School. He's the proud husband of Liz and proud father to Jack and Catherine. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest speaker today, my good friend, Jackson. All right, I may walk around uh, a little bit if that's okay. Um, and we'll dive right in and really appreciate your all's time and, and having us here today. So Endeavor's mission, Endeavor's leading the high impact entrepreneurship movement around the world. And what that means is all about job creation, wealth creation, and inspiration. So. Endeavor was founded in 1997 with a very simple thesis that they're great entrepreneurs and they're great companies everywhere, but oftentimes based on geography, they lack the same kinds of access points to talent, markets, and capital that are afforded to one if they just so happen to be in Austin, Boston, New York, Silicon Valley. So Endeavor works to clear these barriers to success so that ultimately these great entrepreneurs, their great businesses can scale up, go big, and give back and reinvest in the communities in which they operate. And this is a very important piece of this virtuous cycle. So founded in 97, the Endeavor model is this. We launch, we select high impact entrepreneurs, we work to support those high impact entrepreneurs so that they can scale up. That means job creation, wealth creation. We want to help these entrepreneurs multiply their impact and ultimately, again, reinvest. So this is the model that we've carried out from 97 to now. So fast forwarding to present day, Endeavor operates in 27 countries, uh, four US markets and it is truly a global interconnected network of business people, entrepreneurs, mentors, and investors. Uh, and as you can see, Louisville is quite literally on the map, which is great for our region. So when we talk about high impact entrepreneurs, what, what do we mean? Who are these high impact entrepreneurs that we're looking to select? High impact entrepreneurs are the ones that create hundreds, if not thousands of jobs. And these are the ones that also create the commensurate amount of wealth that comes with that scale. Not just for themselves, their investors, but also for their employee base and ultimately their community in which they operate. Most importantly, high impact entrepreneurs reinvest. 
They reinvest financially, but importantly, they reinvest their knowledge, their credibility, um, their access points, and in doing so, they multiply their impact. They inspire others to do the same. Endeavor's rigorous selection process has about a 2.5% selection rate globally, and it culminates, uh, as Charlie mentioned, in what are called Endeavor International Selection Panels, which are just that. These Endeavor International Selection Panels convene uh, the network from around the globe to bring that next cohort of high impact entrepreneurs into the network, such as the esteemed Stacy Griggs sitting right in front of me. So now we've selected these high impact entrepreneurs. We wanna support them. We're gonna support them in scaling up, providing these unique access points to talent, markets, and capital. So talent may be sending them to Harvard or Stanford Business School where we have direct partnerships. Uh, access to Bain, EY, Bessemer Ventures, quite frankly, the mentor network across the globe and the peer network of like-minded entrepreneurs. Access to markets is a bit self-explanatory in that we're physically in these 27 locations and nine uh, industry verticals. So there is an opportunity to access across a broad swath of different uh, entrepreneurial ventures. It's everywhere from software, to manufacturing, to food and beverage, and in between. All of these different industries can really have a profound impact at scale. And the final piece of the access to capital, Endeavor does manage a formal investor network. This investor network is composed of a fairly high echelon of global venture capitalists and global growth stage investors. These are your Sequoias, A16Zs, Red Points, Tiger Global, uh, General Atlantic, so on and so forth. These members of our investor network uh, work with our entrepreneurs to provide them the capital they need to scale and grow. Sitting on top of all of this is Endeavor Catalyst, which is our co-investment venture capital fund. It is rules-based, so if an Endeavor entrepreneur is raising five million in equity or greater and has a lead institutional investor from our investor network, it automatically triggers Catalyst as the follow-on investment. So it's pre-committed capital uh, into the markets that we operate for our Endeavor entrepreneurs. So we talk about this multiplier effect and high impact entrepreneurship. What, is, what does Endeavor look like on the ground? What does high impact entrepreneurship look like on the ground? And so we're gonna go to a case study uh, from Buenos Aires. And before I dive in, let me just, it's a little faint, but I'll try to describe this graphic. So these rings here represent the year in which a company was founded. These various lines denote the interconnectivity, the connection points, be it direct mentorship, investment, spin out employees from other uh, businesses. Um, and these dots, these bubbles, represents the size, scale, and scope of an entrepreneur and their business's impact on an ecosystem. So the bigger the bubble, the bigger the impact, and the more connectivity, the more lines, the more robust, the more healthy this ecosystem is. So Buenos Aires, 1999, remember our first office was in 97 in Buenos Aires. The entrepreneurial ecosystem is a practical desert. Uh, you may even ask why on earth would Endeavor even launch an office there, right? There's nothing happening. And that's kind of the point as we move forward. So by 2007, you see something happening, but it's still fairly nascent. Uh, however, connectivity is increasing. By 2012, something's happening. It's emerging, really exciting. The interconnectivity between these entrepreneurs is increasing rapidly, and they are supporting each other in their growth. And just a short 15 years later, this is what Buenos Aires looked like. Incredibly robust, 
high impact entrepreneurship. And it really exhibits the power of the few in catalyzing this multiplier effect. And what we found is out of this entire ecosystem, this incredibly robust entrepreneurial ecosystem that is generating jobs, creating new businesses, creating wealth, and reinvesting that, six high impact entrepreneurs, six, directly influenced over 80% of this entire ecosystem. And five of these high impact entrepreneurs are Endeavor entrepreneurs. So before we move forward, it then begs the question, well, what if we didn't have high impact entrepreneurs? What if people just did one and done, they didn't reinvest, they didn't pay it forward? This is what the world looks like without high impact entrepreneurs. It goes back to being a practical desert. So without high impact entrepreneurs or without endeavor, with. Without, with. Which one would you prefer? So this really demonstrates the profound power that high impact entrepreneurs in this multiplier effect have on a region and an ecosystem as it takes hold. And as we move forward, we've seen the same trend that we saw in Buenos Aires play out in Colombia, in Istanbul, in Egypt. And we are very bullish and believe that we will see the exact same thing play out here in our fair region uh, as we have seen in the past. So launch, select high impact entrepreneurs, support those high impact entrepreneurs, help them multiply their impact and reinvest. That's the journey of an Endeavor entrepreneur. This is where Endeavor Global is today. 838 companies led by Endeavor entrepreneurs. These Endeavor entrepreneurs are generating in excess of $10 billion a year in revenue. They employ over 650,000 people around the world and growing. Uh, and have received over 30,000 hours of direct mentorship, advice, connections, et cetera. And our market is now part of this global impact. And our market is a growing piece of this impact. So what do we look like here? So in a short period of time, there are six Endeavor entrepreneur-led companies. Uh, from our region. These businesses already have created 400 jobs, 400 opportunities uh, for people in our market. And just these six companies alone uh, are projecting to have around 200 new job openings over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, and they're experiencing tremendous growth and have received well in excess of 615 hours of mentorship be it directly with members of our board locally, members of the network nationally, or members of the network globally. This includes engagements with Harvard Business School, Stanford, EY, uh, the Endeavor Investor Network, and a number of other outlets in which we work to provide the entrepreneurs here on the ground the support they need to scale and do that and more. So, these are really the heroes here. These Endeavor entrepreneurs globally and of course in our market are the change makers. They're the ones that are gonna lead the future of our economy and so we wanna introduce them to you. So Joey Rivera, Rivera Group, this is a cybersecurity and enterprise software business headquartered in Sellersburg, Indiana with offices also in Louisville in the greater DC area. Selected as an Endeavor Global Entrepreneur in October 2015 uh, during an Endeavor International Selection Panel held in Marrakesh, Morocco, where we have an office. Jonathan and Patrick, uh, Ready App. This is an enterprise communication platform to the uh, non-desktop hourly worker. They were selected as Endeavor entrepreneurs during an international selection panel in Mexico City. The esteemed Stacy Griggs. Come on, you gotta stand up, buddy. <laughs> 
So uh, eltoro.com, uh, advertising technology, uh, digital advertising technology business, one of the fastest growing businesses, I, I might add, since he's here in the audience in the United States. Um, he was selected as an Endeavor entrepreneur uh, in Dubai, UAE, where we also have an office during an international selection panel. Uh, Andy and Slav, uh, SKU Vault, uh, e-commerce, warehouse and logistics software platform, uh, selected as Endeavor entrepreneurs in Boston during an international selection panel. Sean O'Leary, Edge, uh, his previous company was Genscape. You may be familiar with that one. This is his next company. Uh, it is a predictive analytics and data management uh, business. He was selected as an Endeavor entrepreneur in Medellin, Colombia, where we have an office. Kyle Green, healthcare asset network. This is a health technology platform that allows hospitals and healthcare providers to buy and sell surplus inventory and refurbished equipment. It is the only one of its kind that we know of in the world, and he was selected as an Endeavor entrepreneur in London, England, during an Endeavor International Selection Panel. Moving on real quick, it, we'd be remiss not to uh, mention this fantastic founding team uh, and founding board members who themselves set the tone of high impact entrepreneurs. These business people, these entrepreneurs embody uh, scale up, go big, give back, job creation, wealth creation, inspiration. They're reinvesting in that next generation of entrepreneurs such as Stacy, Kyle, and the others that we uh, mentioned by mentoring and provide them inspiration to do the same. Uh, we're very fortunate to have such a great team. This team exists in every market in which we operate. So looking ahead to 2018, where are some of the places in which our entrepreneurs from this region uh, will be engaging? Uh, you can see it's pretty diverse from Dubai to Manila uh, to Cape Town. These are the international selection panels where again we bring that next cohort of entrepreneurs into the Endeavor Global Network, along with some investor network events, and importantly is Charlie mentioned earlier, we are hosting the third Endeavor International Selection Panel uh, next year in 2018. That's the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday after the Kentucky Derby, coincidentally. Um, and it also coincides with Cinco de Mayo, so it's now become the Cinco de Derby International Selection Panel. Uh, but this, this event will bring business leaders from around the globe. Business leaders, entrepreneurs, investors, all in our city in support of high impact entrepreneurship. We wanna close with a video um, and also thank you guys very much for your time and then we'll happily answer any questions that uh, you may have. Um, can we cue up the video?
platforms like Endeavor, which supports entrepreneurs starting a $100 million fund to invest in companies across Latin America and the Middle East, and Africa and Southeast Asia. So that's, that's Endeavor, scale up, go big, give back, no excuses. Thank you guys very much. Question and wants to approach the microphone, please do so. Hello Jackson. John. Um, my name's John Clark, with, I'm with Old Stone Press. Um, and, uh, Watching you grow up from afar, this is a perfect job for you. Um, I, uh, my question is though, um, in the environment that we have today and what uh, the future might hold with, uh, uh, and I don't want to get political here, but with the new tax codes possible, and what do you see that's going to be helpful to grow what you're trying to do here in Louisville anyway, uh, in terms of what the federal tax code could do or uh, any of the other entrepreneurial things that uh, the current administration is talking about. Sure. Um, so we have a saying endeavor that, you know, we, depending on your point of view, when, when things go a certain way, entrepreneurs step up no matter what. They're just, from 97 to now, we've seen it all. We've had a revolution in Egypt. Buenos Aires has a currency crisis every six years, like clockwork. And yet, I mean, they do. You can just time it. Um, and yet companies that we support out of Buenos Aires are IPOing on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, Istanbul, Turkey, uh, we had a company, that picture in the video of the gentleman with all the hands pointed toward him, uh, he sold his business to Delivery Hero for close to $600 million um, in Istanbul, Turkey. And then they don't have option pools and whatnot. It's just not really part of their culture. So he and his co-founder stroked a check for $30 million back to his employee to rightfully compensate them for uh, their work. So despite difficulties or changing environments, changing winds that you know occur across the globe and change is the only constant, entrepreneurs time and time again step up and figure it out and move forward. So we stay focused on the entrepreneur and in doing so, they accomplish fantastic things. So we're, I guess by nature, a fairly optimistic uh, culture. So we think the future is bright, almost regardless of externalities. These high impact entrepreneurs figure it out, no matter what. Hey Jackson, thanks for your presentation. It's amazing what you're, you guys are doing in Louisville. My question is about Louisville. Uh, you know, it seems like we're always looking up to Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Nashville, other cities around us. How did this opportunity come to Louisville? How'd you make that happen? And what, looking forward, what do you think, what do you hope, what are your goals as to what the impact will be? Uh, well, hopefully the impact is as big as possible. We'll have to talk to Stacy about how many more people he's gonna hire. <laughs> um, no, um, I think in a lot of regards, those regions are maybe looking up to us. Um, Louisville originally came on the radar via a company called Rubicon Global, which is uh, led by one of our um, board members, uh, Nate Morris, and his co-founder, Hank Dudgeon. Uh, their Series A uh, round of investment financing was led by Peter Kellner, um, whose day job is as a venture capitalist. He runs a firm called Richmond Global. Um, but he is one of the co-founders of Endeavor uh, with Linda Rotenberg. So that was the original seedling. That was the original connection, was a company that's founded by Louisvillians 
Uh, Nate Morris lives in Lexington now. Uh, and we met and that kicked off uh, the conversation. And then a number of, of players, including the, the board members, uh, became engaged. And as you see that esteemed group, as my friend David Wood knows, when they put their mind to something and they want to do it, it tends to get done. So Endeavor got done. And so we're the third US uh, office uh, and actually ended up helping Atlanta uh, get going. So it's it's great company to keep. Rick, our final question. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much, Jackson. My Thank name you. is Rick Harnett. My first exposure to Inter to Endeavor uh, came in Montevideo, Uruguay, in uh, hey. 2012, yeah. when a very impressive young intern, I think, with the organization there, a graduate of Wellesley College from Istanbul, Turkey, was speaking to Rotary Clubs to let them know that en en Endeavor existed and was looking for those high uh, growth potential opportunities in a very small market, sure. which is a particular challenge. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels between our region and Uruguay. And, uh, but I, I, it also occurred to me that this is perhaps the first real interconnection between Rotary here and Endeavor. And I wondered if you could give us a, some suggestions or ideas or thoughts or how can we strengthen the interconnection between Endeavor and Rotary? We don't want to speak uh, completely on their behalf, but <laughs> at least the first thing that comes top of mind is that the Endeavor entrepreneurs themselves, um, these are exciting businesses and exciting entrepreneurs, and they're right here in our backyard. Um, so they're out there. So we've got the list. <laughs> if um, if you all are ever inclined or, or interested, it would it would probably be fascinating to to hear from the Endeavor entrepreneurs themselves, hear their stories, uh, and you may just find that some really useful connections come out of that. It could be a really fun two-way street. So you have the list, and we have the what is Rotary table right over there by the Bucktail, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I see a partnership here. <laughs> Absolutely. Jackson Andrews, what a great job. <laughs> a shout out at the end of our meeting, and this is uh, one that's a shout out on behalf of our whole community. Thanks, Todd Lanham, for sharing this. As you're no doubt aware, we have a soccer team, a professional soccer team in this community that is really making waves in many marvelous ways. That too would be like one of those charts. The ripple effects are huge. Keep in mind that uh, this weekend, Loose City faces arguably the biggest game in its short history. This Saturday night against the New York Red Bulls at Slugger Field, it's the semifinal of the USL Cup. Kickoff is 7.30. What happens when we win means that in another week, we have ESPN and a whole lot of other folks in town. This is really, really big in terms of all types of impacts that go beyond sports. So, Blue City would appreciate our support. I know they are running some great ticket prices, ticket deals. Todd, thanks for sharing that good Louisville news. Jackson, again, thank you very much. District Governor Missy, thank you so much. Our meeting is adjourned.